Lakshmi Tantra, Chapter 18, Mantras and Their Characteristics Chakra I salute thee again and again, O goddess who abidest in the lotus and art lotus-born. I have learned whatever is worth knowing and difficult to glean even from the Upanishads. O beloved of Vishnu, describe to me the path of mantra leading to the goal of self-realization so that I might worship thy divine mantra form. What is the source of mantras and to what do they ultimately lead? O Padma, what is the purpose of a mantra and how is it sustained during operation? What are its different forms, and of what dimension is it? O Ambuja, what are the characteristics of the Kshetra and Kshetragnya states? Who is capable of evaluating a mantra? What qualities should a preceptor possess? And, O Lotus-born, how should one meditate on a mantra? O Lotus-born, I salute thee. I bow my head down to thy lotus-red feet and shelter under thy protection. Disclose to me in detail the knowledge required for such meditation, the relationship between achievement and the means of attaining it, the relevant pratyayas, experiences, how yoga should be practiced, and the svadhyaya, sacred literature, to be studied, the methods applicable to raksha, protection from evil, prayaschitta, the ritual of expiation, the treatment of funeral rites, diksha, the special rites of initiation, and pratishta, the establishment of the deity, and also the rules for drawing yantras, religious diagrams. All these, as well as adrushtam, the unseen agency, potency of deeds, which is also involved. Shri, O Purandara, the significance of the questions you have put is astounding and unparalleled, and since I am fond of you, I shall instruct you in everything you need to know. Listen, O Vasava, the lotus-eyed Purusha, absolute person, indicated by the term Aham, I am, is the essence inherent in every positive and negative state of being, that which permeates both existing and non-existent objects as their idangta, the characteristic specific to a particular object. That specific characteristic is in fact merged into ahangtva, I-hood. When this island of idangta becomes submerged in the ocean of consciousness, then the infinite Vasudeva alone, who is inert and devoid of creative activity, remains manifest. I am his absolute I-hood, his unique Shakti, consisting of his Ishwarata, Lordhood, and I am ever creatively active, ever blissful, ever maintaining perfect equilibrium, the source from Bhava, all existent objects and possessing a state of existence, originate and become discernible in all that is cognizable. The creative state of Vasudeva has two phases, Shantodita, the state in which Vasudeva is periodically inert, and Nityodita, the state in which he actively creates, sustains, destroys, deludes, and graces the creation. I am the state of Pratibha, insight into the conscious reality that forms the essence of everything inherent in all created objects, and adhering to each of them through their six phases of existence, gestation, birth, growth, 
change, decay, and destruction. Avamarshita, realization of self, identical with avabodha, knowledge, is said to be that highly blissful manifestation, Shabda Brahman. I, Shabda Brahman, am essentially consciousness and bliss, the source of all mantras, the absolute, the mother of all sound, Shakti, not subjected to appearance and disappearance. Narayana is the perfect, all-pervading, absolute Brahman. I reflect that state of his being, which is known as Shantata, tranquility, wherein I am tranquil and at the same time the source from which everything originates. That beginning of my slight effort called Sisriksha, urge to create, which then stirred in me, is referred to as Shanta Unmesha, both my inactive and active states, wherein sound and its meaning, the object indicated, are distinguished. It is universally understood that indication of an object is invariably preceded by use of the sound denoting it. The nature of the gross form of Shabda is that it is obvious that the object originates from Shabda. Shabda is the Bodha, manifest knowledge, and Artha is the object Shabda sound manifests, whereas the primary manifestation of sound arises from Shakti in the form of Shantata, which aspect of Shanti, known as Nada, does not at that stage carry any Vachyata implication. The Shakti attached to Nada is called Sukshma. Unmesha, the second manifestation after Nada arising from Shakti, is called Bindu, which, though carrying implication, is not yet manifestly polarized. This divine and highly efficacious state of mind is referred to as Pashyanti. Besides these manifestations of Shakti, her third manifestation is the state of Madhyama, in which Sangati, the logical relation of word to meaning, transforms itself into a sanskara, impression. At this stage, the distinction between the object indicated and the sound denoting it is only discernible in the form of an impression. Shakti's fourth manifestation following that of Madhyama is the state of Vaikari, in which syllables, words, and sentences become clearly recognizable. Alongside these shaktis of mine, I also have a concomitant shakti of kriya, activity, in the form of bodha rupa, knowledge, which animates the progressive manifestations of my other shaktis, nada, bindu, madhyama, and vaikari. Shanta rupa, nada, Ashanti, Madhyama, and Vaikari respectively constitute my fourfold form. I shall now recount to you the four objects denoted by these sounds that I have created. Vasudeva, etc., are successively the subtle objects of denotation of Shanta, etc. In my sonic state, first I assume the form of Prakasha, light, and bliss, known as ekapadi. Again, I am regarded as dvipadi, differentiated into the object denoted and the sound denoting it. When I am classified in four categories, ushma, sha, sha, sa, ha, antastha, ya, ra, la, va, swara, vowels, and sparsha, consonants. I am called chatushpati, 
When classified in eight categories of consonants, varga, I am known as ashtapadi. And when associated with unvoiced sound, aghosha, visharga, etc., I am called navapadi. As the divine and absolute Shabda Brahman, I am Ekapadi. In the form of Goshavana, Sonants, I am Dvipadi. When producing the entire range of Salila, the undifferentiated creation, Dravya, objects, Jati, genus, Guna, quality, and Kriya, action, described as fourfold, I am called Chatushpadi by the learned. Upon further subdivision into names and the objects named, I am traditionally said to be Ashtapadi. In the state of Avikalpa, when undifferentiated in concept, and Vikalpa, differentiated, I am said to be Navapadi. In the Parama Vyoma, Supreme Space, I exist as the divine, total, and original I-hood, adorned with the garland of eternal aksharas, sounds and letters of the alphabet, spanning all space. I am known as the mother of all mantras, bestowing both prosperity and liberation. All mantras surge up like waves from me, the ocean of consciousness. These forms and masses of sounds, lovely as concentrations of consciousness and bliss, evolve out of me as their substratum and repeatedly flow back into me. Mantras that are of an efficacious and beneficial nature replete with my names, phonetic units, arts of speech, sentences as well as prakarana, treatises, and ahnikas, subdivisions, parts of texts such as chapters, paragraphs, cantos, uchvasas, patalas, etc., prashnas, vaks, anuvaks, mandalas, khandas, and diverse sanghitas, rik, yajus, and saman vedas, suktas as well as khilas, words forming shastras and tantras, also the external public and internal esoteric agamas, and all the various languages, all these fall under direct or indirect speech, gear. This chakra is the form of mantras, in accordance with the relative strength of the mental realization, a particular mantra is prescribed for the individual adept. A mantra is dvani, sound, that the adept invariably associates with the belief that this protects me, and which always protects from fear a person who knows the secret purport of mantras. Every manifestation of I-hood in the graded sequence peculiar to sound, nada, pashyanti, madhyama, and vaikari, based on absolute I-hood and inducive to the revelation of pure knowledge, is, according to tradition, a mantra. In fact, all mantras repeated by those who have discovered the secret of creation and dissolution belong to me. According to the level of the adept's mental realization, a mantra is addressed either to me or to some other deity. Mantras mainly founded on basic words generally belong to me. By their very nature, these attain Brahman, which is both Bhavat and Bhava, existent and the state of existence. Mantras essentially founded on basic words protect and deliver. Mantras that of their own accord reach bhava that extends beyond bhavat, such as the tara, prasadaka, etc., 
are known to have an emancipating influence. Mantras such as Tarika, Hring, etc., which state that the condition of bhava surpasses and at the same time equals that of bhava, are known to be efficacious in procuring wealth as well as emancipation. Some of these mantras find their destination in bhava, whilst others reach bhavat. It is generally recognized that the very nature of this type of mantra is directed towards the acquisition of wealth and emancipation, since it is aimed at the attainment of both bhavat and bhava. <laughs> 